my mic on? That's working. Okay. Well, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, are we getting a bit of an echo, or is that just me hearing it loud? It's reverb in the room. Okay. Okay. Can uh, you all join me in a word of prayer? Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we are thankful uh, once again for the, the blessings and opportunities that you give us, your patience with us, and your messages to us from your word. And we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can continue his work upon our hearts, uh, that we can draw close to Jesus and to one another. We need your presence. We need your Holy Spirit to teach us. And we pray, Lord, for each person searching for truth, that you can help them with their particular needs and struggles. We know that we are placed in trials to, to try our faith, to test us, to strengthen us, and to help us to depend more upon thee. We just pray, Lord, as we look at the past again and its relationship to the present, that you can uh, correct any errors we may have, give us wisdom and insight, and may you help us to have a clear and understanding mind and an open and receptive heart. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Be here now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Hello once again, and uh, today's been fairly intense. Uh, Dwight's presentation this morning uh, regarding uh, the 2300 days is something that for some of us is challenging, and it's going to be even more challenging when he looks at Maccabees and the chronology there of uh, Atticus Epiphanes and uh, Judas Maccabeus. Now, yesterday we had covered um, two presentations dealing with the line of the judges. Um, now, the first presentation that I did, we had some technical difficulties, but I also had difficulties in the presentation. So we took that as God's sign to redo it. So we did study number uh, three over again, so that was the study uh, addressing um, uh, yes, yeah, so Othniel, Uhud, and Shamgar, and then uh, and then of course we did Deborah and Barak as the fourth study. So now the study of Gideon is difficult in that it covers a lot of material. It's three chapters in the Bible, and. Uh, we have several different lines that were created. We did uh, a line for chapter 6, basically a line for chapter 7 and a line for chapter 8, as well as a line of Gideon and also Jeroboam's line itself. And with Jeroboam's line um, uh, and Gideon's line, because he's the same person, it covers the same period but different uh, messages. And I don't think I can do it justice in, in one presentation. So people need to study the notes. You can also refer back to the studies. One of the things I neglected to do when we did the study of understanding the lines is putting good notes and references so that people know where these studies are. Um, so it takes a little bit of searching, even for myself, to figure out, OK, where did we talk about this chapter? Yes. So I should have references under, and I'm going to go through those as time goes on, to give the references to all the studies, what, what we're actually studying. So sometimes it's just basically you just know the number and the date, but it doesn't tell us what the topic is. So I'm going to add those in the notes uh, to the studies of understanding the lines. Now, with Gideon, Jeff had taken the story of Gideon, and he had uh, applied it or directed it um, really to July 18th, about the 300. 
that the movement after what had happened on um, November 9th, uh, that we are now whittled down and, and that the 300 are going to have this conflict, you know, the battle that we have with um, uh, the enemies. And, and that's going to be characterized by July 18th. And, and we still take the, what Jeff was applying is correct, but we just didn't understand what the battle was about. This wasn't, this is about an enemy in the land, uh, um, so to speak, but this, but this isn't really an enemy in the land. This is the Midianites. And um, now when we, when we had gone through these studies earlier, um, in trying to understand this. We really recognized that this was a conflict that was happening in the movement after July 18th. So that's where this main conflict uh, addresses. And there's all kinds of symbols. And we could spend a whole series just doing Gideon, just as we could do a whole series just doing Samson. Uh, but we're going to touch on some of the highlights. Now, one of the things about Gideon is it's really the first study that we found clear evidence that 9-11 and 11-9 are the same way mark. So when Jeff first placed the events of 9-11 on our line, it was August 11th, 1840, right? That's, we had 9-11, it was August 11th, 1840. It was the empowerment of the first angel's message. And later on, he came to understand it as the arrival of the second angel. And so we had one event in history that had these two way marks attached to it. And there are people who left the movement over that because they felt Jeff was moving the way marks, that this didn't parallel Millerite history. Um, but what we came to understand is that when Jeff was doing that, he was actually zooming in to a way mark on our lines. And uh, he did, there was things he just couldn't see at that time because we didn't understand that. And we now understand that when we zoom into 9-11 as an arrival of the Sunday law, we're actually coming to our line, which is the 777 days that go from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021. That is, he mistakenly took that 9-11 symbol in God's providence and applied to it as the rival of the second angel. But we know now that when on Ellen White's line, the arrival of the second angel is the Sunday law, right? That's a future event for us. But when he came to recognize that the arrival of the second angel applied to 9-11, it's because he was looking at the first day of the first month and he saw that he could line up 9-11 with the first day of the first month. Now we know we can line up 11-9 with the first day of the first month. Now Jeff wasn't wrong in what he was doing. He just was at a different magnification in where he was zooming in. And he, we, we can now see this because we can see how he kept zooming in. He had this broader three way marks, 1989, Sunday Law, Close of Probation. You know, after 9-11, you have 9-11, Sunday law, close of probation, right? Then we get midnight, so then we have 9-11, midnight, Sunday law, right? And as we zoom in, we get this 11-9, July 18th, December 25th, 2021. So these are zooming into these waymarks. And this becomes evident when we studied um, Gideon. We start to see this. Uh, more clearly, and you'll, you'll see why that is. <clears throat> um, so the lines that come from the story of Gideon, we're going to go from 9-11 right, to December 25th. We do one for Jeb Jeroboam, one for Gideon. But first, we had done these three lines. Now, I'm not going to draw them out because it would be too much to draw out all these three lines and then draw out the line of Gideon and Jeroboam. And those are the the primary lines. Now, part of what happened when we drew out these lines um, for chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 8 is we were learning how to look at the symbols 
and to place them on a line. So this was, we actually had a lot of insight when we first had gone through Gideon. Now we went through the judges three times. So the first time we went through, really through it uh, with Dwight's notes and studied the details of these scriptures and got a sense of what was happening in these stories and their relationship to other stories in the Bible. So that was that line upon line method which Miller would use, comparing scripture with scripture. And, and then we drew them on a line as events in our history. Um, and, and then we started to uh, refine that, placing them upon a line, marking the way marks, and then the symbols and the verses that went with those way marks. And so this was a long process. So with the book of Judges, we spent much more time than the other lines. We found much more detail and we found greater and greater evidence uh, for what the message was to us. And we believe that the story of the Judges, because it's giving us this history from 9-11 to 2023, it's speaking to us right now. Uh, it's giving us light for our feet at the present time. But I'll just uh, give a quick summary of these, and it is in the notes. But when we look at the first line, uh, Judges 6.8 talks about this prophet that has sent a message to God's people about a coming deliverer. And so we look at this and we say, well, this is this period um, prior to 9-11, and uh, that, that prophet represents the work of Jeff, and also it represents the work of Ellen White in, in past histories. Um, but this is a work that is preparing people for a message. So in some ways we can say Ellen White's mention about the Sunday Law is, is part of that, but also the work that Jeff did from November 9th to September 11th. And when we drew out the line, we put below it November 9th, 2019. So September 11th in 2019, and why? Well, because we're in the history of Gideon after Sisera, and we know that Sisera was about Parminder. And so we could then put 9-11 and 11-9 together and see that this, is, uh, this offering is prepared in this sort of zoomed in line from November 9th, 2019. The priests are selected out, the true priests. Now we have this offering that's prepared. And then, um, so we know in our bigger line, this is uh, the message of, this is the first message. But in this line, it's a period of darkness, this period prior to September 11th, or really prior to November 9th. And, and we took this idea where we could um, do this. So, we have in Judges 6, verse 11, something that doesn't look like 9-11. But if you do this, you can go, and, and this would be a really direct mirror. So if we did it as a mirror, you would end up with this. And then you would flip this over again, and you'd get this. Right? So you go from this to this, and then you flip this over like that, and you get 11.9. Okay? So in this way, we could look at this also as um, you could just flip this over like this, and you could say this is 9.11. So you can see how these all relate to each other. 11.9. This six eleven. So this is six verse eleven in Judges chapter six, and that's the verse that says, "And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abazir, Abba Ezrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites." Now this is, of course, going to still occur in these lines of Gideon. Um, but in the line of Gideon itself, we're going to encompass all of these uh, chapters. So we're going to go from chapter 6, giving this initial history, all the way to chapter 8. <clears throat> but you can see how we're doing this. We're saying we have a symbol, which we can say is 11.9 and 9.11. 
but we also have a symbol in the verse itself that is this angel coming down. So that's what we have at 9-11. In a line is you have 9-11 and you have an angel coming down, right? Now, Ellen White applies that to the Sunday law, but we now know that our whole line is a zoom in to that Sunday law. And so Ellen White sees it like a city on a distance, on a map, it's a dot. As you drive towards it, you start to see the different way marks. And, and so as you approach that city, it doesn't just arrive all at once, it's gradual. And so the Sunday law doesn't just come out of nowhere, it arrives uh, as we move through time and we notice these way marks approaching. So that's what these way marks are. They're way marks of, of a journey. The idea of a way mark is when you go through the mountains and you backpack, sometimes trails are marked with cairns or stones that are set up and those are way marks. And I've been on a, tr on a trip in the snow where there was the little posts coming out of the ground as I was going through the mountain pass. And if those posts had not been there, I would have been completely lost because all I could see was, you know, maybe 10 or 15 yards around me. I couldn't see anything else because it was snowing, and, but I could see those posts. And so that guided me over the mountain pass. Otherwise, I would have to stop because you're not going to travel if you can't see where you're going. Um, so we need these way marks to guide us. Now, we had a second line. So in that line, I guess I should deal, it addresses this name change. Uh, from Gideon being named to uh, um, Jeroboam, Bale. There's, there's a bunch of things that happen in there. There's going to be the fleece. And, and we put these as different dates. So, you know, I'll just lay them out. September 11th, 2001, which is November 9th, 2019. Uh, that's the arrival of the first message. It's formalized. Judges 6, 21 and 22, that is going to be June 21 and 22 which is going to be the Tennessean uh, publication in 2020. And then Judges 627 is going to be June 27, a date that was marked three weeks or 21 days before July 18th. That's going to be the empowerment of the message. And um, that's going to be 1260 days from when Rafi and Paneum were first presented uh, to this movement, uh, January 14th, 2017. And then, um, and then we have July 18th, so that's going to be the arrival of the second message, and a name change happens there. And why is there a name change at 9-11? What happens to this movement at 9-11? Or not 9-11, July 18th, pardon me. We have a name change at July 18th. Uh, why do we have that name change there? Because FFA ends, right? Jeff retires. And... FFA still continues for a bit, but in, to all intents and purposes, the FFA we knew had ceased. The structure still exists, but not the spirit. Uh, it, it's just bones with no life in it. Um, and then we have these fleece. In, the first fleece is March uh, 7th, 2021. That's when we examine the foundation. That's the 1700th anniversary of the Sunday Law in 321. And then, then the second fleece is when we start the study of the understanding of the lines. So that's going to be uh, December 26, 2021. And so we have, of examining the foundation, we have 187 studies. And uh, it, it looks like we stopped at 391, and I, because of some things that are happened, uh, we're going to actually start a new series of studies, possibly. So it could be that understanding the lines ends at 391. And then we have this third angel arrives, and that's Judges 7. And we're not looking at all the, the verses here, uh, but Judges 7 is going to be January 11th, 2023, right? So it's at the end of January 11th, that's why. In the notes, it's January 11th slash 12, because it's going to be to the end of that date, January 11th, commencing January 12th. And that comes from Colin's study. And so we had placed these fleece, um, and then this other uh, prediction, we look at that as an end. And then we have Judges 7. And, and here we're going to have 
uh, some of the same dates. But there's a different emphasis in that message. And that's going to start with September 7th. And this is going to be about the call, right? So the call of the uh, 32,000 come, 22,000 are sent home, 10,000 remain. Then they're tested at the waters. 300 pass that test. That's going to be Gideon's 300. And then we're going to have uh, these uh, symbols that are relating to uh, July 10th and 11th. That's going to be July 11th is Jeff's last presentation. And then we have from July 18th to 21st, the three days, uh, the symbols of midnight. That's the formalization. That's Boston. And then we have the second angel empowered December uh, 25th. And we have verses, uh, just as we did with the June ones. Here we have uh, Judges 7, 10 to 11, marking July 10th to 11th. And Judges 7, verse 18 to 21, marking July 18 to 21. Um, so there, I, I don't explain much of it, even in these notes. Um, but we had a number of symbols that were important. And one was the 300. Now, when we look at the 300, there's lots of different references. But the one that's sort of not well known is the 300 days uh, because of the flood. That is, there's 300 days that the water prevails and 300 days that the water abates. And so we had looked at that symbol as well. And this is addressing July 18th. The symbol of the 300 ties, ties us to many different stories, right? Uh, the flood itself ties us to the 777, dealing with Lamech, the father of Noah, and also those other symbols, the 252, this, uh, the 187, and the 65. And <clears throat> uh, we also know that the second message that arrives on July, 18, July 10th is connected to the Mayan calendar. So this is a symbol of 273 that comes from the Mayan calendar. And it shows us that July 18th is on a line of failed predictions. So the mind calendar gives us lots of information. It ties us to Snow's letters. And then we have a third line. This is Judges 8 primarily. It starts on Judges 17, 19 to mark July 19, the day after. And this one's going to have a call. But this call here is going to be uh, for, the, for people to come and fight um, and join Gideon in pursuing uh, uh, Zeba and Zalmunna. And so those are going to be the men of Sukkoth and the men of Penuel. And we have there these events. So we first have December 6, 2020. That's going to be the declaration. That's going to be FFA rejecting its message. And then we're going to have um, near, nearly a year later on October 2nd, uh, where we have a conflict. That's with the men of Penuel. Uh, that's going to be uh, the American group. And uh, there I'm going to be banned from uh, speaking or teaching in that group. And that's going to be confirmed on the 9th uh, when I get the letter from Steve Welk saying um, that I'm not welcome to teach there. So we have this conflict and then this confirmation of it. And from there, there's 77 days that goes to December 25th, 2021. And that's going to be the conflict on December 25th, 2021. And that conflict is with the Canadian group. And then 49 days after that is going to be Odilio's presentation, that seven weeks. Together from uh, the beginning to the end, we have this 126 days. So we have this symbol of a 126, which symbolizes a 2520. And then we have on February 16th, 2022, this is empowered when uh, the Canadian group no longer in their email, where they normally would talk about my presentations are coming up, they're going to send an email. I think that's what this one is, uh, the email that I get uh, for um, Three Angels Messages, and I'm not included. I believe that's what the February 16th date is. And then we have, um, yeah, I should have it in my notes, but I don't. And then we have... Um, the January 11th date again. So we have this January 11th date is the third angel arriving. So we can see that these generally, each of these chapters illustrate the same history, but with a slightly different emphasis. So now we get to Gideon's line. 
Now, Gideon's line is primarily about the proclamation of July 18, 2020, um, this warning to Nashville. And of course, we have the 777 days, and there's a division of these days, which comes from uh, what Dwight was talking about. He was talking about uh, the 70 weeks, and that if you looked at that 62 weeks, it's going to be 434 days. And we know if we take the, the seven weeks at the beginning and the seven years at the end, so the one week, and you multiply seven times seven by seven, you get 343. If you add it to 434, it's a way of dividing up 777. Now, Stephen and Odelia, I can't remember who did it specifically, but they had divided up uh, the 777 days we have in our line as 252 and 525. So that's just another natural division, uh, a type of iteration division of those periods of time. Um, so that's going to be there in this line. Um, and, and the significance of that, of course, will be seen. So in Gideon's line, um, when we go through this, we have uh, the dream. So, of course, we're starting at 11.9. And then we have this dream. And this dream um, is going to connect us to Numbers 3 and Acts 27. It's going to connect us to March 27, 2020. That's the formalization of the message. Now, we're not going to go into the details of that. Um, but on November 9, 2019, I present the Mayan calendar at, at the School of the Prophets in Arkansas. Um, the 273 uh, days that point to July 10th, so eight days before um, that date, uh, July 18th. And, and showing that, uh, and that's going to lead later to the understanding of the failed prediction. But at that time, I'm just used showing that the Mayan calendar, what it does, uh, how it relates to Josiah Lich's prophecy, and how it relates to the message of July 18th and gives us this symbol of 273. So March 27th, 2020 is at the center of that chiasm of these March 27th, one in 2019, one in 2021. And it's also going to begin 100 days of prayer. So the Seventh-day Adventist Church, because of the pandemic, begins a period of 100 days of prayer, which is 144,000 minutes. And... Um, I should draw this line out for people. So I'm reading it here, but we need to draw it out. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a fairly simple line in a lot of ways. So we got over here, 11.9, and that's going to be in the introduction of the 273. And then we're going to have March 27th, 2020, that's 2019, and that's going to be, obviously, 273, so that's going to remind us of Numbers 3 and Acts 27 that give us this symbol of the 300, and remember Ellen White, she talks about the people on the ship in Acts 27, we know there's how many, how many people are on the ship? 276, which we divide out as uh, 273 plus 3, right? That's where, and in numbers, we have 273 as well, right? So that's going to be dealing with the Levites, okay? But Ellen White, she's, how many people does she say on the, on the ship? She says 300, Okay, so we can see that that relates to the 300, that symbol. And um, so this starts a period of time, which is 144,000 minutes. That's, of course, 100 days, since there's 1,440 minutes in a day. And that's going to be the days of prayer. And that's going to end on July 4th. 2020. 
and this is an inclusive count in this case, they're going to count all of March 27th to, and all of July 4th, right? And um, the symbol here, of course, July 4th, that's the start of the, the United States. That's the new year, right? In, in a sense. And, and the new year, it starts the Feast of Trumpets on the first day of the seventh month. Now, this isn't the first day of the seventh month. This is the fourth day. In Canada, ours, Canada Day is the first day of the seventh month. But as a symbol, July 4th marks the beginning of the United States. And so uh, that period of time, if you have this as the first day of the seventh month, it can also represent the first day of the first month. Right? We understand how that is? Because that's the start of the year. There's two starts of the year to the Jewish calendar. The first day of the first month and the first day of the seventh month. They're religious and civil calendars. But we can say that that's, for the United States, it's, it's also their first day of the first month. Okay? And then we're going to have, from the end of that, we're going to have 18,720 minutes. Right? That is to July 18th. So that's 13 days. <clears throat> and uh, then we're going to have um, December 25th, 2020. So this is going to be, again, that story that we had of Sukkoth, the men of Sukkoth. And the men of Penuel. Those, this story is going to show up. And here, um, we're, we're using it in a different symbol. So this is December 25th, 2020. And this is January 6th. 2021, and it's also going to go 10 days of prayer, so I'm going to write in 10 days, 10 days of prayer, so that's uh, 14,400 days, and that's going to end on January 16th, right, so that's minutes, okay, <clears throat> So the men of Sukkoth, the men of Penu are placed here. They're placed in a different place than they were in the other line. But this is still going to relate to um, uh, this message, right? Now, what happens on December 25th, 2020? Nashville. The Nashville bombing, right? And then um, January 6th. Yeah, yeah, so the siege of, I like to call it the siege of, of Washington, okay? So you got the siege of Washington, and, and this, um, from here to here, from here to here, this is going to be 13 days. And again, that's going to be uh, 18720 minutes, okay? And then we have the 10 days. So we, this is the 10 days of prayer. We have 100 days of prayer and 10 days of prayer. And if we go from here to here, uh, this is going to be how many days? 187 days, right? So July 4th being the first day of the first month as a symbol to the 10th day of the seventh month, uh, would be the 10th, you know, October 22. Now, the biblical date for this is uh, the 10th month, the 22nd day. That's the biblical calendar. So we see that that becomes October 22. Now, what's being addressed here is, of course, not the American and, and Canadian groups. What's being addressed here is the United States, right? That is, this is taking this symbol that we are talking about attacks on the United States and 
it's going to illustrate what happens in this movement, right? So some people would have trouble with that. They would say, well, which is it? But the point is, one is a type of the other. Does that make sense to people, that we have this as a type? So this external, so if we're looking at Gideon, this line is external, okay? Does that make sense? We, we have external lines. But when we deal with Jeroboam, it's going to deal with the internal, right? The things that happen with in the movement itself. Now, of course, this is going uh, to have this situation where we're going to have this anniversary, and this is going to be Jether. Now, who's Jether? Yeah, he's the oldest son of Gideon, right? And he's going to be asked to slay um, Ziba and Zalmunna, I believe, right? Is that the ones he's going to be? No, no. Orab and Zeb, that's it. I knew I was doing it wrong. So there's Orab and Zeb, and he's going to be asked to slay them. Now, um, there, there's lots dealing with this. We know that uh, Gideon is the son of Joash. That's one of the things that's mm -hmm. in these lines. And here we started to look at these Hebrew numbers a little bit more. So we had Jether, he's in 8 verse 13, and we're looking at 8 verse 13 to 21, but we know 8 13 is Palmoni. And we looked at the word uh, Shuv that's there and Chemish, and they're both iterations of the same number. 7725 is Shuv, and Chemish is 2775. And then we looked at Gideon the son of Joash, which that phrase together is, um, I, I think it's 209 or something like that, if we just do the, uh, the normal sum. So it gives us the 20th day of the ninth month. And we're marking this on December 25th, 2021. That's the 20th day of the ninth, ninth month. And then we have this connection with Barak. So Barak, his number is 1301 and Joash is 3101. And so we have these iterations of these numbers that are there. And there's a lot more to it than that. But what we end up having is we have a, a really important point. Um, and we're going to have January uh, 10th. No, it's not 10th. Um, pardon me. It's going to be, yeah, December, December 25th, 2022. So one thing we'll know here is, notice here, we have December 25th, 2020, December 25th, 2021, December 25th, 2022. So we see this repetition of these dates, these anniversary dates become really important in these lines of Gideon, in all of the different lines. But in this line here, we have the 25th as this anniversary. Now, when we look at the 16th here, um, one thing of note is that this... This is day number 434. Now, a brother from uh, Vietnam had noticed this prior to January 16th, but he didn't want to really say much about it. He didn't want to look like a time setter, but he thought it might be significant. Um, and then we know that there's going to be here uh, seven times seven times seven days, which is 343 days, to this date here. And that's going to be, of course, um, between these two Decembers, that's going to be 365 days, right? And then we're going to have 365 days, of course, here again. Um, so you're going to have 365 days here. So we start to see that this structure is connected to this story. Now, when we look at Jether, what is Jether not going to do? He's not going to slay Oreb and Zeb. And we're not going to go into all the symbolism of that. But these are messages that need to be addressed. And, and we actually place them with the attack that's being made against the message at this time in the movement. 
So this is going to point to something that's much more internal once we get here. Um, but when we have this conflict here, um, we have this 365 days, and then on December 25th, 2022, we're going to begin the study addressing the, the lines. So this is going to be the lines because the complaint is everything is too complicated. So we're going to do the lines simply presented. And it's not well received. Um, not well attended, but we do do that presentation and people can watch it on YouTube. You can judge for yourself whether it's simple or not, but it is simpler than what we were doing. Um, and um, the thing about this date here is this um, December 25th date in 2022 is going to be the first day of the 10th month. Right? So this is going to be dealing with the divorce. And then we have uh, to April 5th, 2030. So I kind of crammed this in, but you got that April 5th, 2030 date. And that's going to be that 2000. Um, in this case, it's going to be trying to remember it. Anyway, it, it's related to, to that. That um, We'll just put it the, here as it's going to be these, uh, the period of the divorcement. So the first day of the first month which is going to be 88 months, right? So instead of 88 days, okay? So it's also 90 days too is another symbol. And I think there it's 90 days. But when we start to look at this, we start to look at this line, we can see here a line that fits the story, that has all of the symbols that establishes the way marks and is something very, very clear. It's not something that's contrived. Yeah, and it's Zeb and Zalmuna, I think. I wrote that he, he refuses to call Zeb and Zalmuna in my notes, but I think I'm wrong about that. But anyway, um, so people have to look that up and tell me which it is. So I might have to change that. Now, we have Jeroboam's line. Now, Jeroboam, of course, is Gideon, right? It's, it's, it's the same person, but... It's going to deal much more with the internal message that exists in this movement. So I'm going to have to erase all this. What? It is Ziba? Okay, so I was correct the first time. But I wasn't certain. Yeah, Orb and Zeb, you know, are going to relate to uh, the two studies. Um, but um, anyway, so now Jeroboam is going to have a line. And this is going to be internal. Okay. So it's an internal line. Now, it's in some ways not that very different in that it, it occurs in the same period of time. It's going to go from November 9th, and I probably could have left a lot of these waymarks up here, but it was fairly messy. So we got 11.9, and we have over here, I'll just put December 25th, 2021, and that's going to give you that 777 days. <clears throat> now, this story is, of course, dealing with Jeroboam, and when we looked at it, uh, we looked at, um, even though this message is going to address uh, the publication of the Tennessean, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be dealing with the warning, but why is it internal when it's dealing with this warning uh, being made? Why am I saying it's internal? I mean, we're going to have this worldwide attention. In some ways, you could say that both of these have address worldwide events. So maybe the internal and external isn't the best explanation for the differences here. Um, but this is going to deal with conflicts within the movement uh, regarding... Because one of the problems is, should we warn Nashville? 
And definitely, when the prediction fails, what is the response? Why are people wanting to distance themselves from July 18th? Would it be embarrassment, right? And they would say, I'm embarrassed to talk to my friends who I told and, you know, to all the people out there. We published this publication that, you know, uh, in the Tennessean, that Nashville was going to be destroyed, destroyed. We look like fools, you know, and they want to distance themselves from July 18th, just as many Millerites did from October 22. And so we notice that parallel right away. Um, now, here, it's really pointing to FFA, right, because this is about FFA, and their ultimate rejection of July 18th, and, of course, those within the movement that sympathize with that rejection, right? So this rejection begins in the line of here, November 9th, 2019. I'm there from uh, November 7th to 11th, and... I was given just the Sabbath school superintendent remarks to say anything. Um, and because of Toby, I was given the afternoon as well. So I did two presentations there, which we need. We need the doubling of those presentations on the 273. And, and there we're going to have the Mayan calendar. But what they're concerned about here, FFA, is what? Stephen, what were they concerned about and when we were there on November 9th? Well, it's on the 10th that they're going to really address it. So the Thanksgiving prediction, right, which was done in 2018, and that's what they were concerned about. And Dwight has said this is the things they talked about uh, when they had their meetings later on. You know, Theodore made this false prediction, right? right, which isn't the case because I didn't make a prediction. All I did is I said, we have this line, it points to a date, can we predict anything? And it can show whether we can predict events, and it showed that we can't, right? So that was what it was about, but they tried to claim that I was making a prediction, which I had not done. And I was asking them to look at it and see if we could make a prediction. So I wasn't making a prediction. Uh, other people took it as a prediction, though, but and it's and I'm not making an excuse. I'm saying that it was very specific what we were doing and what we wanted. We wanted to see if they would look at it because we thought this might be a test that we could use. Now, Jeff looked at it and said all of the arguments were valid, but even after the fact, he interpreted the events differently than I did. So I didn't even say anything about what what it meant until after I looked at some events and I had one interpretation, Jeff had another. But he still said what was presented made sense, even though this was after, you know, this is going to be November 9th, 2019, um, <clears throat> almost a year after I had uh, talked about that and they had shut me down. But here they're going to address this. So FFA is already rejecting the symbolic use of numbers. They don't care about uh, they're, they're embarrassed about things that are predictions that fail. And so that's what's going to be addressed. So this is going to be that Thanksgiving Day prediction. And um, so we just have a short time to address this line. But what I'm going to you know, say about this is we have this, uh, this line is going to deal with this publication, right? So in here, we're going to have an increase of knowledge. A lot of things increase in knowledge. And we have the June 21st to 22nd. The symbol of June 22nd is FFA, right? Right, that's going to be in there. And this is going to, of course, be in 2020 that we make this the Tennessee. And it's going to be international news, right? And now we can count from this two different days, ordinal and cardinal, and it's going to bring us to a uh, December 25th uh, date, and that's going to be December 25th, 2020. So we make this prediction, and it's going to bring us to a date we had in the line of Gideon, 
but this is going to be December 25th, 2020, and that's going to be the Nashville bombing. And this is going to be 187 days. So from when we publish this, we get the symbol of July 18th being fulfilled, not on July 18th, but in type with this event, the bombing of Nashville. So it's not obviously the attack we were predicting, but it is uh, connected. Now, there is an in, uh, internal or external event, but nobody's going to recognize that in FFA because prior to this, prior to this date, FFA is going to cut off all contact with us. So in December 6, 2020, they're not able to be here for this. They're not going to recognize the 187 days. They probably still don't know about it. But that's going to be the declaration, the 126, the writing on the wall, the close of probation, in, in a sense, for FFA in that sense, as an organization. Okay? So we, we have that. Now, we do have uh, this other December 25th, 2021 date. And um, I could have made those closer together. And then we have July 19th before this. So you got July 19th. We're not marking the 18th. We're marking the 19th. That is Hiram Edson's vision, right? Now, Larry Lesher argued against this. He said, Hiram Edson, you know, the day after their disappointment, he's out in the court field. He has a vision and they have the answer to their disappointment. But the reality is Hiram Edson's vision is not known until the 1900s. There's a few people who know about it, but it's not in any Adventist publication until Loughborough writes about it in 1905, I believe. So this was not something that was well known. Obviously, James and Alan White, friends of Hiram Edson, knew about it, as well as um, uh, Crozier, who then, because of that, him and Hiram Edson studied, and we have the Day Star uh, article that Ellen White refers to where we have an explanation of it. But it was unrealistic for him to expect that we had this complete answer all figured out. But I had it, why, why we were disappointed, the line of failed predictions. I presented it on the 17th and on the 19th. So, uh, so we did have an answer to that. And then, of course, we have uh, July 18th, um, 2020 in here. Now that's going to be, and I didn't write all, but you can know this is the arrival, formalization, empowerment, arrival, formalization, empowerment, and the arrival of the third message. And um, we have in this line, probably, I'm just going to move this over. I know I'm going to be a little bit late here. And then we're going to have uh, the fourth message arrive. So this is the fourth angel arrives. And this is going to be January 11th. And this is also going to be the fourth angel arrives. And this is uh, April 5th, 2020. Or 2030, pardon me. So this, this actually happens in Millerite history. Because in Millerite history, you have uh, the end of the 2300 days and the 2520. And then you're going to have a history here that's the first generation. And... And they're going to reject the message as a failed reform line. Is my mic interference or something? Okay. And then um, just maybe my my battery should be good. My mic's battery. Um, uh, so we have this. Then would be the Sunday law history. So we we put that on that line in that way. Now, we have all these different verses, and this is the part that becomes really interesting if you go through the study, because, again, we have this whole line that's going to use this 611 verse, right? It's going to use the 622, right, and 21 and 22. We're going to use the 632. Now, why 632 A.D.? 
622 AD. What are those? Mayan calendar commences July 18th, Gregorian at sunset. That's, or not Mayan, Islamic calendar. Right? Begins. And we know this relates to um, 622 also in, in different ways. And then 632, this is going to be Abu Bakr's decree. And so this is going to be verse 632 that's going to refer to this. And then July 19th is going to be verse 6, verse 34. We're not connecting it to a year. Um, but here we're going to have FFA, and then we're going to have this period uh, from July 19th. This is dividing up this line, and we call this FFA, and this is the refuse, or the remnant, but they refuse. So that's why I use that word. And then we have, um, with December 6th, we have all of these symbols. One is we have... Uh, chapter 7, verses 1 to 8. So you can see July 18th there. Plus we know, of course, it's the 126. And if you add the 20, multiply the 20 by 12, 6, you get 25, 20. And then we have um, here, uh, December 12th, we need 25, 25 times 12 equals 300. Right? And then we're going to have Gideon's ephod, which we're not going to go into. But we believe that Gideon's ephod refers to the use of chronology to continue to predict time. It becomes a snare. And so the things that we have done, that we have studied, that God has given us, this, which is going to, of course, be made from these ornaments, these moon ornaments from these Ishmaelites, right? So we have all of these truths that we have, this gold, this precious truth, and it's going to be used in a wrong way. And we're saying that in um, how it's being applied is incorrect. It becomes a snare to this movement. So that's going to be Gideon's ephod. And then April 5th, 2030, we mark as uh, the death of Gideon. Now, you know, this April 5th date here in my notes, I, I address it, but I'm going to address it in the week of Christ in more detail, right? So we know it's connected to the divorcement, the 10th day of the first month. And we know here that this date in 2021, um, this is, you know, the 20th day of the ninth month. Now, this January 11th is 2023. And... Um, there's a connection between these two dates, and I'm not going to go into that right now. Now, is there any questions about what I presented? I mean, it's a lot of information, but what we can see is that these symbols fit together in a way that is impossible to be contrived. And, and there's a lot more witnesses than what we looked at. I just tried to hit the highlights. <clears throat> now, uh, the study that I'm going to do later this evening, uh, Jotham, he's going to be the 70th week, right? And so that's why I'm doing the study on the midst of the week. Basically, the study that I presented in 2018, um, because that's going to relate to April 5th, 2030. So um, these things all are building on each other. I'm not trying to give you too much information all at once. But in each of these studies, we're looking at something a little bit different. Here we were looking at verses matching um, dates and symbols, right? Sometimes we look at Hebrew numbers. Sometimes we look at spans of times or symbols of numbers or symbols of names. So each time we're looking at a different tool or focusing on one tool more than another. Okay, so let's close with prayer. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you um, in total amazement at your mighty power. And we know, Lord, that 
your ability to see into the future and to see everything about us. You know, with Iran's presentation, all of these dates, even though they're hard to take in. We know, Lord, that your hand is over us, that you have been guiding us in our study of your word, in the chronology, what Stephen presented, the evidences of 1533. And Lord, all of these are witnessing to now, to what's happening in this movement. And Lord, we need uh, a repentant heart. We need to know that, um, that we have set aside the world and embraced the truth. And that it's going to do this work upon our hearts. In spite of the fact that we can't see these things, we need to know it uh, by faith, by what we have seen in your word and unfolding in our lives. So we pray for each person and we pray for the studies later this afternoon. And we pray for those in Africa who are studying these things. We ask, Lord, that you can bless them. Help us, Lord, to minister uh, to them, even though we're in a dis at a distance, uh, to their spiritual needs and help them to minister to one another in love, in unity. And we pray for the people here in North America who are so divided uh, we just ask, Lord, that your spirit can awaken us to our need and that we can be united. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. And in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen.